This episode of What the Tech is brought to you by Casper, an online retailer of premium mattresses for a fraction of the price because everyone deserves a great night's sleep. Get $50 off any mattress purchase by visiting casper.com slash Andrew and enter promo code Andrew at checkout. Hey, buddy, welcome to What the Tech. I'm Andrew Zarian. This is a very early morning show. It's 8 o'clock here on the East. It's 1 o'clock in the UK. Paul Therat, live from Manchester. How you doing, Paul? <laughs> Pretty good. How are you? You're, you're, you sound a little more uh, husky and yeah, sultry today. Yeah, look at this. I'm, I can nice. keep up with you. This is what I sound like on some of my shows, you know, uh, by the time, by the time yep. it's time to record what the tech normally, you know, we do it at two, three o'clock in the afternoon on a Thursday or Tuesday. Uh, right, I have been right. defeated by the day and <laughs> I have, I have gone up yep. to a whiny, nasally high pitched voice by that point. But this is normally what I sound like generally throughout the day. I'm, I'm happy. Yep. Uh, I'm uh, the day I'm going to seize the day. This is nice. my day. And then by noon, I have curled up in a ball. I'm laying in a nude somewhere in the corner of my bedroom, and I'm crying <laughs> right to myself. Next to an empty bottle of Jack Daniels. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just wondering what the hell went wrong. So, Paul, you're in Manchester right now. I am. And a nice-looking hotel. It's a, Yeah, it is a nice hotel. Yeah, nice-looking hotel there in Manchester. Why did you go to Manchester? I still, I'm, I'm still a little confused. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I came here to record Windows Weekly Live with Mary Jo Foley uh, at the Stacked 2015 conference. And uh, Mary Jo spoke at the show. Um, I just came in to do the podcast. I heard she was great. Yeah, it was really nice. And um, we did. Uh, it's funny. I, I, I took a couple pictures of this. I should probably post a few more of them. But um, this event was actually held at a comedy club. So I have finally yeah. appeared as I've always suspected I could at a comedy club. As a clown. As, as literally the uh, the clown prince of technology. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, I heard yeah. Mary Jo did great. Um, now you're mm -hmm. going to London tomorrow. That's right. Uh, and then uh, Steph is coming to see you. Yeah, she's flying out Friday night, so she'll arrive there on Monday. I was talking to Jess yeah. about this this morning while I was typing away to you, and I'm like, oh, you know, you know, Stephanie's going there on Saturday. She goes, said, wait, she's going there for like a day and a half? I go, listen. Would you take a day and a half in London for the weekend? She goes, absolutely. <laughs> no, yeah, go, it's actually, go. yeah, it's 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 two it's two pretty full days, and then she leaves on Monday. But um, yeah, right, it's better than nothing, and uh, it wasn't super expensive. Um, I got a, a killer deal on a hotel there, and I don't know how, but I had a couple hundred dollars worth of credit on Expedia somehow, and uh, even you know, it was almost like they were paying me to go there. Wow, so, that's great. Yeah, um, I have. Really um, well. I have a story for you for the bonus show. We'll do a very quick bonus show if we have time. It's going to have to be very quick. Yeah, it'll be very quick. Yeah. But I'll talk about uh, my uh, how ridiculous flying in some states is in the United <laughs> States. Because even though it's an international airport, guess what? They don't fly out internationally from that airport. Okay. Yeah. Florida, I'm talking to you. <laughs> I will get to that. Uh, we have a lot to talk about. I want to talk about some of the trends I've noticed with people's shopping mm -hmm. habits for the, for the holidays coming up. Uh, it, it's alarming for some companies. I'm shocked to talk about that. Also, we're going to talk about some Windows news, some some things that I've noticed uh, last week due to uh, the update mm -hmm. and everything else. But before we do that, I want to talk about a great sponsor of ours. And you know what, guys? There's a reason why I am uh, in such a great mood this morning. I sound great. I look at my skin. My skin <laughs> looks great. <laughs> I got I got some ridiculous haircut going now. Uh, and it's because of Casper. Um, I sleep on a Casper mattress for people who don't know what Casper is. I've been talking about that for a while. Paul has a Casper. I have a Casper. They are a state-of-the-art uh, mattress company. They're revolutionizing mattress, uh, the mattress in industry by cutting the cost of dealing with resellers and showrooms. And they're passing the saving down to the consumer. I'll tell you why. King size mattress. Phenomenal mattress. Um and, and you know what's funny? Before I get into the, the, the copy, yesterday I met with a guy. His name is Lewis. He works at Press, the, re the place that I go to, the bar restaurant that I go to. Paul, he's a huge fan of yours. Okay. I mean, like, he loves you. He, 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 he loves you. Uh, and, he, and he turned around and he goes, Andrew, I got a question for you. Like, you talk about 
you can talk about Casper. You talk about the, the other ice. Do you use a Casper? Do you actually sleep on a Casper? I go, yeah. Right. And right, right. he thought that was ridiculous. He's like, do you really? I'm like, absolutely. I don't use, there's not one product I advertise that I don't use. The only one that I don't use is, um, is Braintree. And that's because I'm not developing an app, but I know plenty of people that have used it. So when I'm telling sure. you about a company, when I'm telling you about my sleeping experience on this thing, uh, I'm actually talking about my personal experience. I've told you a thousand times, and I'll tell you again, I went from a very expensive 20-something $100 mattress that I absolutely hated every single day, and I slept on this thing for six to seven years, and it was awful. I got it because I have four herniated discs in my back. Uh, my back is shot. I, I mean, for someone that is not a professional athlete, I have a lot of damages done to my body in that sense, <laughs> but uh, I got the Casper the first night, and I slept on the floor because I didn't even have the foundation yet. I had nothing. I got the mattress. I got sick of this stupid mattress that I was sleeping on. I threw it out. I dragged it out of my house. I, <laughs> the Casper mattress, I lifted the box. I brought it upstairs. I cut the packaging. I cut the, it's like air compressed, opened up. I slept on the floor and was the best sleep I've ever gotten. This is since last January. So listen, I could, I could tell you a thousand reasons why a hundred day guarantee period that you could use this as a trial if you don't like it guess what no hassle your money's back it's right yours uh and casper mattresses are made in the usa uh save 50 dollars save an additional 50 dollars uh as one of our audience members by going to casper.com slash andrew that's casper.com slash andrew and entering the promo code andrew at checkout listen these are great guys they're here in new york i i, I love supporting local business and apparently they love supporting us also uh, they've been with us for a long time, and I can't speak. Uh, I could I could talk about these guys for hours, but I can't because I got to do a show. But Casper.com, guys, go check them out. I want to thank Casper for supporting with the tech and, of course, for supporting the GFQ network. See, I love doing that. I love talking about something that I know, you yeah. know, from yeah. personal experience. I can tell you, like, listen, these guys are awesome. Go use them. Um, so I want to talk about that guy, Lewis, because he he really – I was talking <laughs> to him. I had, I had lunch with him. He's a He's a – brilliant brilliant kid and i say kid he's 22 but to me a 22 year old is a kid it's funny how that happens right paul all right to me you're all children but yes <laughs> uh but you know he, he's 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 coming he came up with this really good idea for a startup and, and he i get the i get presented these ideas all the time i don't want to say what it is because i don't want to you know give away whatever he's doing but he told me the idea and I'm, I'm i'm having a beer and i'm eating my sandwich and i actually looked at him and i go lois i thought this was going to be the dumbest idea but this is actually brilliant and he was he goes what really he goes that's a paul answer i go you know what i guess it rubbed off wow you would call you would i don't call know if that's a positive effect but i'm happy to have an effect <laughs> <laughs> uh so i wanted to talk to you about this um you know i I had lunch with my family the other day, and we were talking about. They were asking me like, "What should I buy?" You know, um, yeah. you know, my 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 son wants this. He wants a laptop. He wants a tablet. He they want a, you know a new phone. And I was shocked that almost every single one of them this year, nobody picked an Apple product. Interesting. I was shocked, and I really think it's attributed to the commercials people are seeing right now. Uh, it's okay. it, it, Amazon has a commercial for that $49 tablet. Yep. Yeah. Um, that was the biggest question I got asked. How is that tablet? Would you recommend that tablet? And I've, I've never used it, so I can't really speak about it. And I go, well, listen, it's 49 bucks. What's right. your other right. option? They go, well, I was thinking about an iPad mini and I go, I would go with the iPad yeah. mini, but you know what? $49 you can compared buy to six. You can buy six of those tablets for the price of you one can buy, iPad You mini. can buy more. Than, how much is an iPad mini now? 300 bucks? The new yeah. one? Yeah, so when Oh, no, the new one's probably 400. Yeah, so the old one 249 for one. So you, yeah, you you're actually right. Six of them you could buy for the price of that. And they're just giving actually, them out to Actually family. more because you know they have a six pack, right? You can get six for the price of five, then you could buy another one that you'd have seven for the price of six. Price of six seven. But six. Price of five. Wait. Price of five. <laughs> price, price of five you get six of them. Yeah. But right. I thought that was amazing no. that Okay. <laughs> you know, it really the is price. about the price. Right, but then you buy another people. one and you have six. Yeah. I, I think it, it really yeah. has come down to the price for a lot of things. You know, I, I think we are in a little bubble here and our audience is in a little bubble where we buy the premium end products. And I'm using that term loosely. Um you, we buy the high end Samsungs, we buy the iPhones, we buy, you know, the Windows phones, and those aren't cheap either, unless you're buying, you know, the lower end Lumias. But 
Yeah, I feel that was a, a missed opportunity too. But oh man, we could talk about that for for days. How that should have been Let's unsubsidized. <laughs> uh, but yeah. do you think that I, I see this being a major trend this year? And this is bad for Apple because normally every year, I mean, up, up until the last couple of years, I would recommend people buy an iPod Touch for their kid. You know, their teenage kid. If they don't have an iPhone, get an iPod Touch or get, uh, you know, get a get an iPad if you you're, you want to spend that money. But now, even the people that were willing to do that two three years ago are realizing that a lot of this stuff is disposable. A lot of this stuff is being replaced every year or two. So they don't want to spend the five hundred dollars on a tablet. Sure. I got asked sure. about these lower end Windows tablets and uh, lower end, I'm sorry, uh, Windows laptops and Chromebooks. Uh, yep. I mean, everybody's fascinated by these things. How can you sell this thing for one hundred and ninety nine dollars? So, you know, <laughs> the funny thing is, actually, these are decent laptops. You can get a Stream 11 or that uh, IdeaPad. Uh, I think it's 100 ass is the model. And they're, they're both high quality machines. I mean, they're too small for me. I'm humongous. But I mean, 11 inch screen, um, just about a full size keyboard, not quite, but close to a full size keyboard. Uh, decent specs for the price, right? Two gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of onboard storage. Um, but it's a full Windows PC. You get 365 uh, personal, it's a $70 value. Uh, I, I think on the, it might be on both of them, but at least on the Lenovo, I think you also get a $50 gift certificate to the Windows Store. Uh, meaning the uh, you know the app game and console, and uh, that's <laughs> I mean you know after a while it's like why don't you just send me a check yeah you know, give me the computer and give me some money yeah um, and the, the thing is I I feel like people were probably really burned for the most part by netbooks a few years back and I know when you look at these machines you think oh man they're doing netbook again and it's really not that bad uh, it's not they're not as sad as Netbooks were, in fact, they're they're decent. My wife uses an HP Stream 11 every day, um, not as her primary computer, but she uses it on a standing desk, and she really likes the typing experience on it. She really likes the keyboard. Yeah, I was actually shocked at the keyboard. It's actually a, a really good keyboard. Um, my father-in-law has this one, the Stream 11, but he has the uh, mm -hmm. the older model, not the the latest yeah, not one. The one that just came out. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, I'm looking at. You know, it's interesting. I'm looking at on Amazon right now, and you could get the 8.1 version. This is fascinating. You get the 8.1 version for $179.99, and the Windows 10 version is $199 for the 11.6 inch. I wonder what the spec yeah. difference is, though, because they're not listing it here. It's a slightly new, you know, it's the newer Rev Atom processor is the okay. big difference. Um, I would still spend the 20 bucks and get the Windows 10 version just because you don't have to go through the hassle of installing Windows 10. There's going to be a storage issue there. Um, but also some of those perks, you know, like uh, I, I suspect both of them will come with Office 365. Uh, but maybe only the newer one might come with a store coupon. Um, but regardless of that, I, I just to not go through the complexity of having to upgrade your OS, just get the Windows 10 version. Yeah. They even have a 13-inch uh, a version of this. So, I, I mean, these are the things that uh, I'm seeing people asking the questions and buying. And I was surprised on how many gadgets are being sold uh, yeah. this year. Like, the, you know, my... My mother-in-law wants to buy one of these tablets for everybody. You know, forty-nine dollars. You know, she was she was asking me, "Would your brothers want one of, this?" What did, you, what did you call them? One of these what? Tablets. Oh, tablets. The, the, I, the, for some reason, I no, no, no. The, heard, the fire. Yeah, the fire. Yeah, I heard when you said tablets, I heard apples. <laughs> one like, of these apples. Fifty dollars at the Apple Store will buy you a pair of headphones, uh, a, a cable of some kind. You can get yeah. if fifty dollars at, at the Apple Store. You're buying a, a USB two cable. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, Maybe a Thunderbolt cable if you're I haven't, I haven't bought a Fire tablet in a while. Um, I When they switched to the HDX versions for the high-end uh, tablets, um, I didn't really like the form factors that much. I didn't like changes they made to the OS where they, they really turned it into like an Amazon front end you know, with a shelf and everything just for yeah. Amazon content. Um, I will say that this new version of the OS appears to have changed that somewhat. It looks more like regular Android. It does, yeah. Which I, th which I think is, is better. Uh, I have not experienced it, so I can't really say that for sure, but based on the photos I've seen. And, uh, you know, it's, they're 50 bucks. I mean, these are probably safe choices for kids, and um, it's not a huge investment if something goes wrong. Amazon has really good customer service, believe it or not, but, you know, more to the point, uh, it's not a huge investment. So No, I mean, and uh, you know what's interesting? So they have some deal happening uh, for Black Friday, and, and I can't remember. John, our editor, sent me uh, yeah. because we're putting together like a Black Friday list that we do every year at G uh, mm -hmm. on the website. 
And there'll be some Xbox news soon, by the way. Well, the, ooh, okay. Uh, which I was going to talk to you about that next, but um, forty nine bucks is for the Fire Seven Inch. Yes, for the Seven Inch, and then the Six Inch is ninety nine dollars. So I'm guessing the Six <laughs> in, the Six Inch has better specs overall than the Seven Inch. I well, I, I, they may not be of the same product family. I mean, I, the the new forty nine inch uh, forty nine dollar version might be. Uh, the you know like a new design that's cheaper you know like cheaper to make cheaper just cheaper in specs you know I don't uh, it's it's possible that the it's a low, the, the six display is from the previous gen okay so the yeah. six is an HD display whatever they're calling that I think it's twelve eighty mm -hmm. by eight hundred and the seven inch is ten twenty four by six hundred something like that yeah so it's kind of garbagey yeah, yeah. forty nine bucks I yeah mean, it's is 49 it, bucks. you know yep. how garbagey is this. At forty nine dollars, you could really justify this, right? You could really, you could really <laughs> yeah. justify buying yeah. six of these and giving it to all like the the kids in the family. Yeah, we could buy a six pack. <laughs> that's exactly yeah. That's exactly that's exactly what my, my mother. And that's the do. ad. You know, my my wife kind of commented on this. She doesn't really pay attention to this this kind of stuff too much, but there was an ad on TV where it showed the little. It looks like a six pack holder with the tablets in it. You know, yeah. and she said, "Are they seriously selling?" like a six pack of these tablets and i said well I, they are um actually <laughs> it just sounds it sounds so stupid you know, it does it's like but a, i'm telling you right now i could guarantee there are six people that you know that would love to get one of these yeah yeah you know your kids nieces nephews cousins uncles you know there are people out there that want to get these um she was my mother-in-law was asking uh, would you want one of these you wouldn't want one of these right i go of course i would of course I would. Who wouldn't want one of these? Um, the other thing I noticed, Paul, and I thought this was a little gimmicky. There are, and I can't even name the companies, but they're selling these gigantic tablets for kids. Um, you can go to like Toys R Us and buy them. It's like some off brand. I've never heard of them. And they're gigantic tablets. It's like a, like a big, like 12, 13 inch tablet. Jeez, I'm and not it's for are they kids. padded or something? Are they? Yeah, uh, it's like it's like know, they have like the thing on the side. Um, it, it's and they're running like a weird version of Android, like some right. special like child edition of Android, uh, which you could actually get that. Uh, Amazon has that actually. They have a ki Fire Kids edition. Yeah. Also, yeah, yeah. but it's something like that. It's like that kind of concept where you know it's kind of locked down with the type of stuff you could download, type of stuff that you could watch. Um, and that seems to be a big hit too, but those things are causing, like, I know some of them are like three, $400. Yeah. Those yeah. kid editions. And you could just buy the same exact thing. I'm sure there's a, if it's an off brand, I, somebody else is making it for half yeah. the price. I mean, I, I think, you know, if you, if you're in a family that's buying uh, expensive iPads for kids, uh, you know, there's a special place in hell for you. But, um, <laughs> I, certainly there are people who buy an expensive iPad or an iPhone or whatever device it is. And as they upgrade, they hand them down to kids, and that's not something that helps anyone for Christmas, but um, it, or the holidays, or whatever. But it, it's certainly better than buying a you know a, a three to seven or eight hundred dollar tablet from, from Apple and handing it to a, a child that's still in elementary school is just uh, you know the definition of irresponsibility. Yeah, let's really. take this iPad Air and just fling it across the room. Yeah, it's just yeah, wait for the next tantrum, you know, when they can't download yeah. that app they want. So you mentioned you had Xbox news. Can you talk about it now or now? No, okay. we cannot. Okay. But I hear there's something coming. Is something coming in the next couple of weeks? Oh, sooner than that. It's for Black Friday. So Black oh, Friday is not that far away. Right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So a product? No, no, no. Black okay. Friday. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Because. Um, they, no, no. There's no There's no new product surprises for Xbox, yeah. <laughs> you know, in the, in the near future. Like, are we going to get a yeah. Halo controller? What are we talking <laughs> Surprise, about? Surprise, right. We, we made a new smaller Xbox One. I'm sorry if you bought one recently. Yeah. I would love that. I would love a smaller Xbox. I would too, but I, you know, next year at the earliest. Do you still think that's going to happen? It, uh, yeah, yeah. A refresh version that's cheaper. Yeah, they, they, they get smaller. You know, that's the way components go. This way, you know, pr uh, component pricing goes. Um, I, I feel like they made some really serious design mistakes with the Xbox One, which is weird because they got some stuff wrong that was really right about the Xbox 360, including the availability of really easy to access and uh, swap out storage. Right. And so you can add USB storage to the Xbox One, but that actually just compounds the size and complexity problem of the device because you get a bunch of external storage hanging off of it. Um, what you really want is a smaller Xbox that has a 
a clip-on or a slide-out hard drive, which is what we had on the 360. Yeah. And if you want to switch to an SSD or you know a larger capacity drive or whatever, it's really easy. And you can't. It's do not that an much. SSD in there, right? Well, no, not in most of the models out there. But there's a new, um, there's a one terabyte version of the Xbox One that just started shipping in the past few weeks, I think. And uh, it's a one terabyte uh, hybrid drive. So I believe what that means is it's a one terabyte hard drive, but it also has a SSD or flash memory based on the front of it. Yeah. I don't know how big it is, you know, 16 or whatever. Uh, and it's, you know, it speeds the access uh, uh, demonstrably. So you can buy that. Uh, is it? I'm looking at it right now. They have the Fallout, uh, Fallout 4 bundle. It's a one yeah. terabyte. I think you can buy it standalone as well. I think, you know, when they, when they went down to 350 on the console, I think the original selling price of this console by itself is probably five hundred dollars. Um, trying to see three ninety nine, not bad. Three ninety nine. Yeah, three ninety. I mean, that's yeah, that's nice. Yeah, uh, and you have different. I'm on Amazon right now. I'm looking at this uh, one terabyte three game holiday bundle, so you can get it with three games. Comes with Halo. Yeah, so 5. that's actually that's the big news for Xbox this fall or this holiday season is all these bundles. There's a bunch of yeah. bundles and. Custom versions of the console, uh, which may or may not be interesting to you, but a lot of them come with games, a bunch of games in some yeah. cases, um, you know, more storage uh, with that particular console. So it's shipping November 21st, so I guess it's, it's, it's been announced. So here's the weird thing, okay? So if you get Madden, 20, Madden uh, 2016, right? Mm -hmm. It's 381. If you get it with the three games that include Halo 5 and uh, Gears of War and Rare Replay... So I don't know what that yep. is. I guess it's like classic games. That's right. Yep. Um, and you, I think you get to pick the games. Oh, three games plus Halo 5. So you're getting four games. Nice. Wow, that's great. And how much is that? Three ninety nine. Yeah. You know, so 50 bucks, which is as much or less than the cost of one game. You get, uh, what is it, four games in that case? Yeah, I'm going to put nice. a link in the chat room for anybody that's interested in this. Um that's actually a phenomenal, phenomenal deal. I think I may pick that up. Um, I right. actually, I used the Xbox with the new interface uh, over the weekend. Mm -hmm. What do you think of it before I, I tell you what I think? I like it a lot. I do you too. Know, it, it's, it's not the, you know, I always feel like with the power in the console that the user interface should really fly. And through some combination of Windows 10 underneath it and uh, just UI changes that have sped the number of steps, you know, it is a lot faster. Uh, it's especially fast when you know how to navigate around. So if you haven't done, I don't know if we talked about this, but it, you know you can use the bumpers on the controller to quickly go left and right through the UI. Yeah. But you can use the triggers on the controllers to go up and down as well. And so once you kind of figure that out, it's really quick to get around. And I I just think it works well. I this is a a UI type that for Microsoft dates back actually over a decade now to Media Center and yeah. Portable Media Center. It kind of you know, up, down, left, right, you know, whatever you, I don't know what you call that, but uh, it works well. It works really well with a controller. It works well with a remote. Have you, uh, see, I didn't use it with a remote, and that was going to be my next question to you. H have you used it with a remote? Because, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. What, so what I'm thinking of doing, and, and this is just maybe overkill, I'm sure people are going to say, well, this is crazy. Um, I was thinking about getting an Xbox for the living room mm -hmm. just for an entertainment console, just for entertainment, not for gaming. Yep, because I like to play games every now and then, so I like having that option. Um, I just wish it was smaller, you know, yeah. and quieter. I, I, yeah, it's I, loud, right? <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, what would still be or what would be interesting to me would be a smaller Xbox, obviously, but uh, more important would be an all SSD Xbox, um, just for the you know presumed quietness of that, I guess. Um, although obviously a lot of it's just fan noise. Um. That would be an it would be a living room device I'd be very interested in, and, and you know, there uh, Microsoft at one time was working on a version of the Xbox One that was like this, uh, that wouldn't have played the games. You know, like I, I don't know if it would have paid played some of the lower end games uh, or, or you know, no games at all. But it was really designed as an entertainment set top box, and I'd love a device like that. You know, I um, I still have my original Xbox that I had uh, modded, where I was running uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, XBMC yeah. on there. And sure. I hooked it up the other day just so I could see it, and the thing still works. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's 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 
I, I also have an original 360 that I got on launch day, and that still works also. I guess I'm one of the only people on this planet that still has an original one working. There's a there's like a scratching sound that's occurring at the hotel room door. So if a zombie or a vampire or something comes in here, I just want you to know that. The, I always knew that the zombie apocalypse would happen in, in, in the <laughs> it would UK. Happen in, it would start, yeah. It's like 28 days later. That's where it begins. Yeah. It always does. We're safe for another month. I could, I could, I could, strange I could, sound. Are they scratching <laughs> like, at the door? Yeah, it's almost like a... I'm sure what it is is some kind of air pressure thing, and it's causing the door to move in the Go Go see what it is. Take the That's camera. Okay. It's just, <laughs> it's a, it seems like yeah, like the hall with the camera. It seems like it's a um, uh, like a dog or something scratching at the door. But yeah, um, okay. So that I guess that's the Xbox announcement, possibly. Paul no, no, um, no. I I I've heard that there are some Black Friday deals coming. Okay, that's right, so Those I'll wait a week. More, um, yeah, I mean, I, did sure. you did you see that ridiculous uh, list that Oprah put out? For the holiday, like she has like a tech list now. No, I did not see. That. Yeah, yeah, it's like her, her, you know, like favorite things list. Um, she has a tech sure. list uh, that was okay. featured on Amazon on the front page of Amazon. It seems to have disappeared. Well, at this she's point. doing this. I'm going to start recommending women's products because I think it's important that we all branch out into things we know nothing about. Yeah, and I don't know if <laughs> if they got a bad vibe about like, this, but it's no longer yeah. on the front page of Amazon. And I looked okay. at the list, and it was ridiculous. The things that she was recommending were like. So I'd like dumb. to recommend a Volace handbag. It's uh, yeah, handmade by artisans in you know, northern Italy or something. Tuscany. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I don't know. You know, I, I think next week will be interesting when we do the show. So next week is Thanksgiving. Are you back on Thursday? On Tuesday? Yeah, I'll be back for Tuesday. Okay, so I guess we'll do the show on Tuesday, and then maybe we could do our Black Friday uh, suggestion, our, our yearly yep. Black Friday show, uh, which a lot of people really enjoy when we do that. Uh, we go through a list of products that we like for Black Friday, some deals that we know mm -hmm. are coming out, and then we talk about it. Um, I think on our list, she actually had a Surface Pro 4, Paul. Which I was shocked. Say again? She had a, an Oprah had a Surface Pro 4 on our list of recommended tech for the holidays. <laughs> okay. I wonder how much Microsoft, I mean, you know, possibly paid. Her I mean, for obviously, that. Oprah is not a human being anymore. Oprah is a, an organization that includes thousands of employees, and I'm sure that these the recommendations are coming from high paid, pe you know, highly paid people. Yeah, um, within that organization. So I think we yeah. we hadn't spoken the last. I I don't know if we spoke when um when the update came out, uh, the Threshold Two update, but I did go ahead and install. Uh, a clean version of Windows 10 mm -hmm. that I made off of an I, you know, I, I put it on a bootable uh, USB on on a yes. machine, and I put in a Windows 7 key, and it worked. Yes, nice. Oh my God, it was not so the much, best. Oh, it was so much better. But you know what was the baffling thing? Do you feel like you just did something wrong? Like you got away with something? Yeah, I almost feel like you know, I put in like an like an invalid key, and Microsoft yeah, like there yeah. was like and a it glitch. Just, it worked magically, and you're like, huh. <laughs> and I'm going to get a pop-up in about 30 days that tell me that I have to yeah. authenticate my version of Windows. Um, yes, it, it, right, worked, right. It, it works really well. And I have to tell you, the process of installing Windows 10 with nothing on it, it's like night and day. Oh. I mean, it's yeah. super, super yeah. fast. In 20 minutes on an SSD, I had Windows running. That's great. Yeah. Um, was it So was it a problem implementing that initially? Because with, that, with the whole, like, the CD key uh. thing... It was a lot of confusion. Like we didn't know how it would work. So if they, had, you know, it's reasonable um, the way they did it originally. I, except that in some cases, people and I experienced this myself. You know, you you do an upgrade, uh, you go through the steps to upgrade the computer, and then you clean install because the promise from Microsoft is once you've successfully activated it. You'll be able to do a clean install, and I, I feel like that's a reasonable thing to expect of people. It is an upgrade, you know. Uh, actually, have them upgrade the computer. Uh, the problem is that when people did that, it would not activate on the clean install, and now they've blown away their computer. They don't have Windows Seven or Windows Eight anymore. They don't have any way to install it. And congratulations! And you know, the story for Microsoft was no, no problem. Just call product support. They'll give you activation over the phone. And what happened was people called, and they were like, "Yeah, you're gonna have to reinstall it. This is not gonna work." And uh, I, I think the system they have now is a response to that because, you know, who knows what technical problem caused this. But 
this is a reasonable next step. You know, if the, if the technical solution they had before didn't work, well, let's just let people use their Windows 7 or Windows 8 product key. And so I, I think, you could, you know, some people will argue they should have just done this from the beginning. But remember, this isn't really about giving people free copies of Windows 10. It's, you know, it's about upgrading existing computers to Windows 10, right? So yeah. uh, if you have a Windows 7 key sitting around, you could use it on a new computer. What they really want to do is get Windows 7 off of the computers, you know, uh, yeah. that are out there in the world. I mean, uh, and Windows 8 to a lesser extent. So <laughs> More uh, Windows 8, I guess, than Windows 7. Well, no, more Windows 7, really, because Windows, meaning, not from a, like a user experience standpoint, but just it's older code. It's not really engineered for the security concerns of today, specifically where Windows 8 sort of is. Um, they want fewer versions of Windows out in the world to support. And so, you know, part of the goal is, you know, there's this huge audience for of Windows 7 users out there. Let's get as many of them as possible on Windows 10. Not by installing Windows 10 on a new computer, but by installing Windows 10 on your Windows 7 computer and getting rid of Windows 7, you yeah. know. That's the point of the upgrade. Well, and I'll tell you, Windows 7 is really dated, um, and, I, and I use it, but when you compare it to Windows 10, you, when you go from a Windows 10 machine and you yes. go to a Windows 7, it feels old. It feels like how it was with XP. You know, starting yeah. to get yeah. really old feeling. So the, you know what the biggest difference is? And this is true, by the way, regardless of what version of Windows you were using. Obviously, Windows XP is out of date, uh, is out of support, but uh, Windows, Windows 7, Windows 8, 8 1, whatever. When you go to Windows 10, the biggest change and you won't really see this in the beginning, this will be more meaningful down the road, is when you go to clean install this thing six months down the road, one year down the road, three years down the road, what you're not going to get is that thing you do get, like if you were to install Windows 7 today, you would have something like 887 updates to Windows Update. You wouldn't be able to install all of them on the first pass. Some of them would just fail, but it would take forever. And then you reboot the computer, and then there's like 137 more, and you do those, yeah. and then you reboot, and there's like eight more, and it's like an all-day affair. And the way they handle Windows 10, which is really a big difference, is they do these cumulative updates that combine all of the updates uh, from the past you know, weeks or months, or whatever it is, and you'll never see more than a handful of updates in Windows 10. And then every quarter, or every so often, so far it's been on the quarter, they release a new version of Windows 10, and when you download the ISO to do a clean install, you get all those updates combined. You don't have to, you know, you're not going back to Windows 8 RTM or, you know, like Windows 7 with the, the newest version was Windows 7 with Service Pack 1, yeah, which is many, many years old. And they also had that weird issue with the CD keys on uh, for Windows 10. Windows 7, I thought it was because I'm using that, like, promotional Balmer copy that they gave out, yeah, that Windows <laughs> yeah, yeah. 7 party thing. Sure, um, sure. And when I put in the key to download an ISO Windows 7, it brought me, it told me, like, hey, it's a valid key. Uh, but here are the versions that you could download. And it was every version except for English. It was like <laughs> oh, Swahili. You know, like That's I had funny. every every language that they support except for English. So, And I asked a couple people that and yeah. that, that had gone through the same process. I go, you know what? That's so weird because I had the same thing happen. Every time I put in the key, it told me it was a different version of Windows. Okay. So I think there might be something wrong with their system. Um, something, yeah, they don't recognize it correctly. So something just now that popped up on my computer, I was, you know, when we were talking about Windows 10, I clicked on, you know, just to see, you know, the overall difference, because this is the equivalent of a widget now, right? You know, it's in the... A widget. In, yeah, like, like, you know it. how we had widgets, the gadgets in Windows? Mm -hmm. um, I do, yeah. This is, I guess, like the equivalent of the gadgets right here. Okay. You know, that's how I see it, but it's, <laughs> it's a much better way. I was just thinking that. And I'm not going to admit that, but yes. Okay, so I noticed this. Do you see this thing here? Lenovo Companion? Yeah. I do, yeah. I never installed that. Yeah, except that you did on a different computer. No, and I never have. This is the only Lenovo that I have running Windows 10. Oh, oh, oh so it did it automatically. I, I think it I, did it I, automatically when it updated have, to um, okay. you know, Threshold 2. I think it realized what yeah. version of Windows I'm running, and it downloaded the Companion app right. for the modern app. So that's actually a useful app to have. I uh, On... Um, on every Windows 10 computer I have, in fact, I'll have it on here. Let me bring it up. Uh, I get something called the Dell Document Hub. Okay. And the reason I get that thing is because I have a Dell laser printer on my home network. I don't want the Dell <laughs> Document Hub, and I actually don't know how to get rid of this. Uh, but what it does is it helps you manage your printer, obviously. And you can do things like, um, well, you can get drivers and software and all that. But more important, you can get... Stat, uh, supplies and so it's right now it's trying to see how the toner is in the thing i can't see it because i'm not on the home network but yeah yeah um, it would tell you how the toner was and then you could order toner so it knows based on being connected 
that hey, he I needs guess this. so. I, I can't. I, I thought, I thought it was based on my user account. Like somehow uh, it had registered that I installed this app, and I don't know what what would possess it to install it every computer I have. But yeah, it must have something to do with uh, the printer being auto detected by Windows. It doesn't ever tell you that it did this. It just puts the printer in there, and then it triggers a Dell Document Hub download, which is not. I never want this. Thing. Yeah. I, I mean, this is interesting. I I, I've never seen yeah. it do this. Right now, it's installing the Lenovo System Interface Foundation. And I need to reboot it, so let's restart this. There you go. Restarting. It's so pretty. Look at that. <laughs> it's a pleasant process. It's not like yeah, some yeah, yeah. you know industrial mm -hmm. <laughs> Eastern European thing. Like we shut down now. You know. <laughs> You know, Kami, like Kami coming and running and screaming at you, like, you must shut down. We're, this is over. So pleasant. Yep. Um, yeah, so I think a lot of people should be happy with this update. You know, a lot of people were, were yes. saying, like, well, there's not really much here, right? Like, well, what's in this update? That's a big deal. It's not necessarily a major overhaul. It's the little things. It's a little bug fix. It's a little tweaks. If this oh, is yeah, something it's that it's doing now where it's realizing what hardware you're running and it sees that you need the specific companion software to go with it, for driver support from the manufacturer, I think that makes it so you know, much better Windows for people. Windows 10 is only it's only four months old, right? We're not uh, we don't ship major new features in four months. I mean, we don't need to. Um, that's true on any mobile platform. iOS, same thing. Um, whatever, whatever. Other other platforms, Android OS 10, it doesn't matter. Um, yeah. You know, that's not how the stuff gets ha you know gets delivered. I mean, we will eventually see major new features in Windows 10, but. Right now, it's about cleaning stuff up, uh, answering user uh, feedback, and I think this is a great update. I mean, I, I think they did a great job with it, and that Windows 10 is in much better shape now uh, than it was originally. Not that it was in horrible shape uh, to begin with. Yeah, I, I think we're we're on the right path. Luckily, uh, yeah. You know, this this is again, this is that Windows 7 feel all over again, where you're saying like, "Wow, they finally did it, did it right. They're, they're finally getting it right." Yeah. Yeah. Um. Someone in chat says, I've been getting auto downloads for companion apps since Windows 8.1, maybe 8. I never got that with 10 when I did this. Maybe it finally realized that uh, <laughs> I, I needed this piece of software because uh, a couple yeah. of things don't work on my Lenovo after updating. I don't, my, um, my backlight no longer works. So I can't, yeah. but like the, for, the, for the screen, like you know how it has like backlighting now to make it brighter? Okay. Like an LED it, backlight. It's not that. Yeah, like the LED backlit displays, my backlighting does not work. Wow. So it's a little dull. Let's see what this is here. Uh, what do we have? Optimize your device. So let's click on op. You can't click on optimize. Okay. I don't know what you are. Storage, fine. You're just showing me things. Memory, fine. Okay. System updates, zero critical updates. Are there any updates? I don't. See, this is. Check for updates. Let's see. Done. There is a problem in retrieving a new update. Thanks. Let's click it again. There is a problem. <laughs> Schedule Lenovo update. I guess I cannot do an update. I got to play with that later. That's interesting I, I, that, that it's doing these companion apps. Or I could just go to Lenovo's website and, I don't know, download the drivers like a... No, actually, you know, on a Lenovo device, you're actually better off using whatever the utility is. Um, and maybe you, you, you'll get that as part of this thing. Um, they have nice, I think it's just called software update or whatever the utility is, but Lenovo has a nice, uh, utility of some kind that will make sure you you know, you can scan your system, make sure you have the right drivers and yeah. we'll download the drivers if you don't. Yeah. It's actually interesting how it works, how well it's detecting it. Oh, wow. There are a bunch of driver updates I'm going to have to do on this later. Right. And I'll right. do that. Uh, so Paul, what's your uh, schedule like? I know we got to wrap it up a little early. You got to run around. We'll do a couple minutes <laughs> yeah, of a bonus yeah. show guys. If we're watching live. Uh, stay tuned. We're going to do about 10 minutes of a bonus show. I'm going to talk about uh, my travel booking experience, which seems like a, okay. to be a trend. It was, it was a little bit of a disaster. I got to tell you about my experience uh, flying here because it was, um, it, was, it was kind of interesting. How many connecting flights did you have? Just one. Just one connecting? Just one one. Okay, cool. Um, guys, if you want to support us, you want to watch a bonus show, go to patreon.com slash whatthetech. You could help us out there. Uh, also, if you're buying something on Amazon, we spoke about Amazon a lot. You could use our link gf at, g, at gfq.co slash Amazon. That's it. gfq.co slash Amazon. You could bookmark that. We, we put in the show notes every week. Bookmark it whenever you buy something. Buy it with that link, and we get a tiny little credit from every p 
piece of purchase. Every everything that you buy, we get a couple percent here and there, and it works. It helps us out. We whenever we do updates in the in the studio, we have to buy new cameras. We have to buy. Uh, I built a brand new production machine, and every penny came from that. So uh, deeply, deeply appreciate it, guys. Uh, at the rod on Twitter, you could go to uh, at the rod. You could go to therod.com. I'm on there every single day. That's where I go for my news, Paul. You're my news source. You're my you're my Bloomberg <laughs> for tech. I go to therod.com. I'm your Bloomberg. I have a lot in common with Bloomberg. A guys. lot, a lot. Do you ride horses? Because he's a big <laughs> horse rider. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm I'm big into horsing. Yeah, I'm big horsing into thing. horsing. <laughs> you can tell because <laughs> I'm horsing. big into horsing. That is the greatest. That is the greatest thing I've ever heard. Uh, uh, you can follow. <laughs> I just fit right fit right in with high society. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can just see you now. You I'm have really... a little crest on your on your you know your blazer. You're on a horse, <laughs> going around yep. and hum. Yep. I don't know who rides a horse like this. Is this how you ride a horse? Oh man, it's am how I you ride a, a horse. Am I riding it's on a, a carousel? <laughs> yeah, you could tell. You could tell how sophisticated uh, we are here God. in Queens. I can't tell that my my horse riding is riding a Harley. Sure, sure. Yeah, you can follow me on Twitter at Andrew Zarian, uh, GFK Network. <laughs> Guys, subscribe to us. We're everywhere podcasts are available, except for possibly Windows Phone, because apparently, uh, I we are off of Windows Phone, and I have no idea how to get on there. I spoke to Rob Greenlee, and he said the way that you have to do it is submit the RSS. To Bing's something, I gotta ask him. Like something in Bing, you gotta like submit it to your RSS, and then it looks at the subscriptions in Bing to RSS. Uh, okay. It's like this convoluted way it's doing it. And you know what? My Rob was the one keeping that whole podcasting division alive over yep. there, and um, unfortunately, sure. he's not there anymore. And I, we, we, Paul Thorat is not on a Windows pod in the in the Windows uh, podcasting store, whatever they're calling it, podcast is that marketplace. True? Yeah, I, I mean, oh what the tech what is not world. there anymore. Yeah, okay. For some, for some people, it is in certain countries. Like if you're in Ukraine, you may be able to listen to us. Okay. Well, let's at yeah. least we have Ukraine. So. Oh, a little, one more thing uh, to do a little housekeeping here. Uh, apparently, Russia can no longer watch us. Oh. Uh, because our host is that's, banned. Is that in our Russia. silent protest against their uh, activities in Ukraine? I guess. I guess that's what it is. We are. Uh, we, if you're in Russia, I apologize. It, it's you are mm-hmm. not going to be able to subscribe to the RSS anymore sure. because uh, Russia has banned <laughs> Only you can stand up to the tyrant that is leading your nation. Yeah. Uh, if but you can watch us on YouTube. So if you want to watch us on YouTube, uh, feel free. If you um, if you if you guys want to torrent it for people in Russia, go right ahead too. I'm okay with that. <laughs> wow. Yeah. This is like the MST share the tapes thing. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, that's it for this week. A little shorter. Uh, Paul is. Uh, He's on a tight schedule over in Manchester going to London. It is 9 yep. o'clock here on the East Coast, and we're, uh, we're saying bye-bye for now.